Just 30 minutes from downtown Albuquerque, the lifestyle on the Pajarito Mesa may as well be of another world. The roads aren't paved. Residents are on their own for electricity, gas, and sewage removal. And the only way to get water into homes is by filling up giant tanks at the local water station. How many people a day come to get water? I've got about 10, 15 now. 74-year-old Frank Martinez, who's lived on the Mesa for more than 10 years, has been manning the Pajarito water filling station since it opened last spring. It's the only service residents have received since an estimated four to 800 families started moving to the Mesa 30 years ago. For a retired Martinez, it provides a meager income. Right now, about dollar 93 an hour. Dollar 93 an hour. For others on the Mesa, like Jose Rodriguez, the water is a sign of progress, even though he has to pay for it, and it still takes some work to get it home. It's hard. Families have survived tough times, and it's hard in the cold weather without heaters, without electricity, without water, the most basic things to live. For Manuel Guerrero, using car batteries and solar panels is a way of life, and he knows that. It's the price he pays for cheap land away from the city. It's so noisy there. It's tranquil here. A common misconception is that people who live out here are squatters, that they don't own their land. The county commissioner, Arde La Cruz, says the only people who live out here illegally are those who've been lied to. There were some unscrupulous land sales folks that, that sold them something that they, they really can't own at the end of the day. So they're living there sometimes because they have to. Sometimes they're there because they just want to. In addition to property rights, getting permits for homes on the Mesa is another issue on the 28 square miles of dusty land. But instead of evicting hundreds of families, the county has started the long process of bringing the homes up to code. A full-time county worker has been assigned to monitor compliance and keep more people from moving onto the Mesa. There have even been talks of getting the roads paved and getting utilities to the area. But why such efforts for people who choose to live off the grid, knowing what it entails? The folks that live and own property there pay taxes. Whether we agree that they should be there or that they shouldn't be there, it uh, doesn't change for me the fact that I don't want kids to get sick. I've got families out there, and those families have little kids, and I don't want there to be some kind of an outbreak because they were hauling water in that wasn't safe. And even though they enjoy the space, the quiet, and the freedom on the Mesa, it doesn't mean these people would say no to running water, power, and better roads. But is that something that will happen anytime soon? Commissioner De La Cruz says while the process has started, chances are not in this lifetime. On the Pajarito Mesa, Antoine Antonio, KOB Eyewitness News 4. Millions of taxpayer dollars were spent on the Mota County Judicial Complex, but money ran out and construction stopped. Uh, this is not the only problem project in the county. This football and track complex floods and has never been used. This community center in Watros has never been used. The blueprints are still sitting on a table inside. The center has sat empty for a couple years. The cost? 500,000 state taxpayer dollars. So I'm very heartbroken that uh, the facility is just a shell. Senator exactly. P. Campos represents Watros and part of Mota uh, County. He says what happened here has happened all over New Mexico. Many capital outlay projects were funded in increments over a number of years. But costs for labor and materials rose and surpassed the original cost of projects so they couldn't be finished. It is unknown exactly how many projects are incomplete, so the senator wants cities and counties to make a list. He also is proposing that a capital outlay committee investigate projects before they're funded to make sure there's a need for them and they can be finished. If taxpayer money is approved, the state would monitor construction progress. We need to get a handle of where we're going with this. Otherwise, we're going to continue with uh, uh, what I call uh, 
projects that uh, truly are not complete and could be out of hand and uh, possibly not, not going to be able to be funded in the long run or even operated. Labor is the answer! I'm here to support the workers in Wisconsin and for unions all over, all over America. One worker is hurt in this country, all of us are hurt. New Mexico public union workers, regular workers, and people from all walks of life, big and small, standing up against what they call an all-out attack on the working and middle class. After 30 years of giving tax breaks to the rich, after 30 years of accumulating billions at the top, people are finally realizing that they've been sold the bill of goods. This over here, I know it don't look very good right now, but when we were here, yes, it was nice, we had tables, we had, we had a chest drawer here with sleeping bags where the homeless came to, where we would leave the, the, this is the hood. We would leave the hood and come to the office and this is where we deal with drugs. This is where we came to exchange heroin for coke, sell prostitutes. This is where you could get anything from stealing a bubble gun to shooting a cop. This is where to do the contact. It don't look like much today, but who knows what tomorrow has in store? We're going to do some Peruvian. This is the best heroin. What I'm going to do is kill three men. And I'm going to remain as I am now because it's just enough to keep me stable. I was born in 1957. I was born addicted to heroin, alcohol. I was premature. I was very ill as a baby. I grew up in this family, and seven years old, I was smoking pot. 13 years old, I was a full-blown acid freak in 1969. 14, I got my first, at 14 years old, I got my first gram of heroin from my father and my brother and my uncles because we were all addicts, a drug family. I witnessed my father being killed. I even helped in some instances relieve people from their pain from this earth. I'm talking family, because they were so sick and ill because of the drugs and alcohol, that all they were doing, the doctors were just prolonging their pain, so we had to put them to rest. My sister died about four months ago. She's 34 years old, pancreatitis, liver. She was an addict since she was 14. I know 14 because I was the first one to shoot heroin up her veins. Clean it up for me.